Okay, we're on to chapter 12, and today I'm going to use a Rode uh, M1 dynamic microphone. It's uh, in the same vein as the Shure SM58 that I just got finished using. Uh, Rode is a company out of, out of Australia, and they make some of the best microphone products dollar for dollar that you can buy. So uh, I own three of these, and these are really nice mics. And you can use them on just about anything, guitars. Um, you can use them off the uh, drum set kick drum. Um, you could use it on an upright bass. Um, it's got its own unique sound, but all of the Rode microphones are very, very quiet. They have very, vo very, lo very low self noise, so that's a good thing. So, <clears throat> hoping my voice can hold out, but maybe when I'm done with all 47 chapters, it'll be in better shape, maybe, okay. So if you remember the last time how it ended was that Gus and Mary were going to head off to church, but Gus had left a note that Dick from the ball club wanted to see um, Billy right away on Sunday morning after the accident the day before. So um, that's where we're going to start chapter 12. It's pretty short. Hey, Dick, I asked, what is this clandestine meeting all about? You know, you steal all my bats. And it makes it a little tougher to go five for five tonight. The way you're hitting right now, I think you could break off a chair leg and hit a double, he said, with a big grin on his face. That's why we're right here now. I'm hitting so well now that you want me to take some extra hitting practice, I ask. Well, that's a new one on me. I want to accomplish two things today, Dick said. First, I want to get your swing on tape now that you're really in a groove. You are swinging so well from both sides of the plate now is the perfect time to videotape all of that. It's time to capture your perfect mechanics so we can study them and compare them if you ever go into a slump. Sometimes when you're not hitting so well, it's just some little quirk that you have developed, some little hitch in your swing, something that you don't even feel you're doing. Maybe you've moved your feet in the box and are standing in a slightly different place. The way you hold your bat when you start your swing, the movement of your hips, or even your feet in relationship to the plate. It can be something so small, you wouldn't believe it. It doesn't take that much to miss hit the ball. A fraction of an inch either way, and it turns into an out. Boy, you're really into this, aren't you? I respond somewhat amazed. I've heard of videos at major league level, but not on the minors. What's the other thing? Well, after what happened last night, the best thing for you to do is to get right back in the batter's box as soon as you can. You must keep ripping the ball the way you have been since you got here. Your at-bats after curtain were pretty pathetic, but you probably didn't notice. That seeing eye single to left was not you. It kept you two for four for the night, but those swings were not Bill Allen's swings at the end of the game. We are going to fix that right here and right now. It's important mentally and emotionally for you to get back in and without the least bit of apprehension and trepidation. If you don't, you could get hurt and give the opposing pitcher the greatest advantage of all, fear. Come on now, we have a lot of work to do. With that, Dick made his way past Red's office through the doorway leading under the stands. I sat down in my locker and began getting slightly dressed. I stood up and took a towel and my batting helmet and took the same path Dick had done. It was time to get back to work. That's what professional baseball is now. It's work. It's a job. Dick and I worked for about two hours spending about 10 minutes hitting in intervals and then talking for about 15, analyzing all the videos. He was intense about his job, breaking down each swing into the mechanical movements, defining each part until the bat hit the ball. By the last half hour, Dick had Harvey, our crazy pitching machine, throwing over 90 miles an hour. But I was on every offering, hitting each one solidly. After about 15 more swings, Dick turned off the machine 
and began picking up the balls, putting them back into the leather bag. I picked up my bats and helped in the egg hunt. Dick was finishing. Hey, Dick, I want to thank you for hitting and working with me early this Sunday. I see what you mean about how I need to get back in there after last night. I was really in a funk about Curtin. I still don't understand it. This was great, and thanks again for all your help and support. Bill, sometimes you can't repair things, said Dick in a serious tone. Life is made up of opportunities, some good, some bad, and once in a while, something bad happens we just can't explain. Sometimes, life brings you a great opportunity, like what you have here with the monarchs and the Yanks. If you succeed, it can bring you great joy and happiness. You have to try and make the most of it. For Christians like us, there is only one Savior in the world we live in, and one way we can go after all this is over. Jesus is the answer, no matter whether life throws you a curveball, a fastball, or a wicked slider at the plate. It is most of the time not a fastball right down the middle. No one can even begin to make a dent in the world's problems like Jesus can. We can only hope that we can help each other a little bit. You can't change the past or last night, but you can brighten the future if you trust in Him. You have the most remarkable gift I've ever seen since I've been in this game. I have never seen any one person pitch and hit like you do. No one has ever done it at this level before, besides Babe Ruth, of course. I think you have what it takes to do this in New York City, but it's up to you to work hard enough, it's up for me to help you, and want it, but want it bad enough, and for us both to remain focused through all of the ups and downs that are to follow. You have a great gift, Billy. Take it and run with it all the way to the top. You can lift a thousand kids right off the ground, but only you can dream it. You can live it for them. I started laughing and thought of someone wanting to be me. How could that be real? I'm just some guy from Illinois. Go ahead and laugh, said Dick. Millions of people come to the ballpark with this one to relax, cheer, and to look at ball players just like you and fantasize. They dream that they are Don Mattingly, Sammy Sosa, Barry Bonds, Cal Ripken, Ernie Banks, and Roger Clemens. And then Billy Allen comes along. What am I telling you is true? When you were a kid, who was in your dreams? Santo, Williams, Hunley, Glenn Hobby, Fergie Jenkins? Can you remember the crowd jumping to their feet, cheering wildly as Ernie Banks rounded those bases after hitting one onto Waveland Avenue? Billy, that's going to be you. Dick, I, I think I understand what you're saying, I replied seriously. It's just that it's hard to, for me to hear my name in a sentence with those great players. It is hard to believe that my name even belongs in the same sentence. I would be afraid to think of it in fear of jinxing myself or something. Billy, I know, but listen to me, said Dick. You belong with them. As sure as I'm standing here talking to you, I never felt it as strongly as I do now. Many guys have left this game and made it. Many others could have, but didn't. They wasted their chances. I'm not going to let that happen to you if I can help it. I will try and help you put last night behind you, if I can, said Dick. If only for myself, I must still try and make some amends somehow. Some way, the problem is not even to know where to begin. Bill, let me give you one more piece of advice before we leave here today. The things that Curtin and his family need right now are things you can't supply. He's going to get the best doctor's money can buy. The team and the league will pick up all his bills. He has people around him that truly love and care for him. Then he will need time to heal, time to think about his future without the game, most likely. That will be up to him and his family. Later on, there may be things you may want to do for him and his family, but right now 
He has everything he needs. What you need to do is to get on with your life and your career, and then when his time is right, you can be there for the curtains if it's the right thing for everybody. When the time comes, it will all fall into place. Just be patient and let those things happen on their own time. He tapped me on the shoulder as we left the batting cage area with his gear. A lot of what he said was true. It just wasn't making things easier for me right this moment, but it would. What I was going through was nothing compared to the Curtin family. Dick was a class guy and a good friend. I walked back into the locker room with my bats and towel. Dick was standing outside Red's office door. I could see Red at his desk. Hey, Dick, I shouted. Maybe you could come over to Gus's house for dinner sometime. Hey, that would be great, he responded. Mary is a great cook. Clear with her and Gus and let me know. I'll get my wife Suzanne and we'll reciprocate. Deal, I replied. Dick headed into the equipment room as I made my way to my locker. I had just enough time to get fully dressed and get out onto the field. The locker room was filled with players, but they all just nodded to me or waved. What could they say? It was just going to take some time for us to get back to normal. Maybe after today's afternoon game, that would happen for all of us.